Hello, everyone. Um, so, yeah, my name is Vishal, you can call it Vish. Uh, I'm going to talk about, can we have the projector showing up here? Thanks. Okay, so, am I audible? Yes. Sir. Perfect, okay. How many are programmers here? How many are developers? Awesome, fantastic. How many of you know what is DOM? Can anybody just mention like what exactly it means? Anybody? Okay, what does it stand for? It is what you see, what you feel, what you interact with in the browser, right? That's the life of, it's like the clothes of your browser, right? Of your site, okay? So, um, I'm going to talk about um, a third kind of process scripting which is called DOM XSS. It is nothing new. It was found like 2005 by a fantastic uh, uh, security researcher called, his name is Amit Dean. Um, the fact of the matter is, he did not have many original applications. He did not have people asking, okay, guys, you know, I want my server side code on the client side. They'll say, oh, what? You can't do that, right? But today, if you see, people are heavily using the YUI, jQuery, uh, and you also have JavaScript on the server side, all right? So with that, now code is coming onto the client, so eventually your all three tier and tier applications are going to be like client applications, right? It's going to be your entire application on desktop. Okay, so browser the future. You will see what are the issues with that, okay? So I typically get asked about, you know, using tools, you know, see how tools will not help. I'm going to evaluate some tools and see, you know, why it does not really do the job. <sighs> Looking, just going back, uh, do you know who invented SQL injection? Do you know who invented process scripting? Any any answers? No. SQL injection was invented by the guys who wrote the books for databases. Process scripting was invented by the guys who wrote, you know, PHP, JSP, and all those programming languages. Because if you read any of those books, they teach you exactly to write a code which is by default vulnerable to SQL injection process scripting, remote file inclusion, file uploads, all the security issues you see here today. All right? And DOM XSS is not different. You go to jQuery, I mean, I come from Yahoo. So you go to YUI, you go to uh, WC schools and try to understand DOM, try learning DOM. They'll teach you exactly how to do code which is by default vulnerable to DOM XSS. Right? Things like document write and HTML. So, if you see, uh, there's a big chain of issues, and uh, how it has been solved is, the history says, the most effective way of solving uh, SQL injection has been what? Parameterized queries, SQL parameters, right? And how about uh, process scripting? Auto sanitization, input validation, right? And that is what going to be in the future as well. Tools are not going to help. All right, so, I'm going to call a few things. I'm going to talk about what DOM is, just a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to talk about something really scary, not a lot on that, uh, because I think that second uh, picture itself is like a job of two hours. The guy who did that, like four guys did it, and I think that's a fantastic research work what they've done. Uh, I'm now going to delve into details, around, details about it. I'm going to just cover like three issues around it, which I'm going to be covering in my slides. We're going to talk about how to use YUI safely. Uh, uh, and then why are we worrying about these security issues? What is happening on the internet? Um, so if you see, you know, if you just go to XSSD, Yahoo had had uh, DOM XSS. Google has had almost, uh, Twitter had like multiple issues. So uh, Stefano reported an issue on Twitter and uh, he suggested fix as well. And Twitter implemented something else and he again cracked it. They again fixed it and he cracked it again, right? So this is not something to get right so easily. All right, we're going to see how things break. We're going to see what Dominator is, which is, I think, one of the best tools that we have in open source today for finding DOM XSS. And I'm going to actually show you why it is still not, uh, uh, you know, able to catch everything because of the model. Uh, and I don't blame DOM XSS, uh, Dominator for it. I think it's still the best tool we have. We're going to see some issues with jQuery. Uh, again, it is not that jQuery is bad. It's just that the way we do it is bad. Uh, we're going to analyze some of the uh, around seven demos I have. Uh, I'm going to see that to make secure applications, you need to become a Kung Fu Panda. You actually need to write, you need to have defense, right? Okay, so, all right, so I hope this is visible, uh, just in case it is not. 
so this is a, how a DOM tree looks like. This is what your browser has. Uh, so you have a document root element, which is HTML, which corresponds with HTML tag onto your uh, browser, uh, uh, on your HTML, sorry. Uh, and then you have body tag, which is like a body tag here, and then you have elements under it, like head and, you know, the uh, text inside those. This is one example where we're using inner HTML. Inner HTML people are, it's a very powerful function, and with power comes responsibility, right, Spider-Man? So, so when you write, an untrusted input, right, with an inner HTML, you essentially are saying that that can contain HTML, okay? And that is by default process scripting, right? So it's a very dangerous, powerful API. Same goes with doc.write. Doc.write directly modifies your DOM, okay? So if you use that API, you are essentially injecting a tainted user input, malicious user input into your DOM, which is again a direct consequence of uh, DOM XSS. It is not that uh, uh, DOM is bad, JavaScript is bad. You have the right APIs, inner text, uh, and things like that, and you have right techniques. So how many of you know what DOM templating is? Or what DOM construction is? There are two ways of doing DOM programming. One is DOM templating. This is what DOM templating is about. You know, I just take doc.write and put stuff into it, right? So that is very easy. You just construct your entire page within doc.write, okay? And a lot of examples, when they teach beginners, they teach this because it's the easiest thing, right? You just don't need to uh, specify things. But I'm going to show another example, which is called DOM construction. In YUI, you can do the same in here as well. So where you essentially create element, okay, like, you know, DOM.create element and so and so, assign uh, attributes, set attributes, things like that. If you do that, you're safe, okay? But that's like four steps, this is like one step, okay? All right, so this is a scary part, don't worry about it. What I just want to show here is that uh, I'm going to be covering uh, three specific issues here. Um, so how many of you know that even if you strip out the, uh, uh, the tags and uh, let's say double quotes and all, you can still fire uh, across the scripting vector? JavaScript URIs, have you heard about that? JavaScript script alert, oh, sorry, JavaScript colon alert, right? So you can still do cross the scripting. And how it works in browser is, whenever you call a URL, it essentially goes to the URI parser, which essentially sends the JavaScript URIs to JS. And you can essentially call a JavaScript URI, and you can put any code here. You can deface, you can steal cookies, you can install malware, you can do anything. Okay? We'll see this case. Uh, and then, how many of you heard about a fantastic feature which causes a vulnerability in a browser? DOM auto-decoding. All right. So by default, when you go from HTML to JavaScript runtime, which essentially is a DOM parser, it processes your DOM, okay? So when you do that, even if you have something encoded, and we had this issue in Yahoo, we had one uh, uh, zero day on this. So, uh, so if you have something encoded like uh, ampersand, LT, semicolon, it gets converted to the script tag when you come here. Okay, and when you write it back, it just goes as a uh, script, right? Okay, so what essentially thing it is, you should be like encoding, once it is encoded, you should be encoded in, in JavaScript as well, which is the Unicode encoding, because it does not understand the HTML entity encoding, okay? So, we'll see that. Uh, there's another issue which is very similar, so when you are like calling, let's say, body onload functions, or any of the on handlers, uh, you essentially, Again, hit the JavaScript parser because those are again uh, the JS functions. Okay, so when you do that and you still have HTML, HTML encoding, it will not work. It will automatically decode. Okay, I am not going to cover that because I think that's the straightforward way of uh, the second case. All right. So why are we worrying? So if you go to Jeremiah Grossman's uh, blog, who's again ex Yahoo uh, in our team, long time back. Uh, so there's a analysis that says that. Uh, DOM is going to be the top five issues in this year. Uh, and I think it has been. Uh, IBM, where I work formerly, and I know there are fantastic people working in this team, uh, Rational uh, uh, AppScan team, they found uh, 2017 uh, security uh, DOM XSS and uh, URL reiteration on uh, 92 sites they tested. So you can go through all these links, what they have, and what they did about it. Right? 
they release something called as JSA, but I, again, I'm not a big proponent of tools. I believe in defensive coding. Tools are a proactive, oh, sorry, a reactive thing, right? Defensive coding is proactive. So I don't believe a lot in tools. They are required, they are necessary, but just use as a reactive measure, not to solve the problems. Okay. Then again, researcher, fantastic guy who wrote Dominator, uh, Stefano Di Paolo. He wrote, uh, he found a lot of issues on Twitter and AOL and all sites. Uh, including uh, Security Byte, where we had a security conference, so he found a dominator on that as well. So you can see that, and so you know, see a demo of that. Uh, so whose fault is it? Definitely not mine, right? It is not a fault of native APIs, frameworks, as well, and by default, they will not protect you, okay? So I have spoken to some of these uh, framework guys and uh, uh, JS uh, gurus. And what they say is, I mean, if you try to do all this, you'll end up uh, having, uh, you know, performance issues. And anyways, you know, it is the features and functions that get the business, not security, right? That's a federal matter. All right. So what is my wish list? What I think can solve the problem. My wish list is make it easier to do the right thing. All right. So DOM construction takes four steps. Can, can you make it one step? As easy as that you do in a DOM template. Uh, warn about unsafe and abusable APIs whenever people try to use it in the books, in the documentation, in your trainings, everywhere. That's a big reason why we use frameworks within Yahoo. We don't want people to come with a set of mindset. You want to tell them how to use our framework because they will take care of these things. All right. Uh, uh, okay, then you also need sanitization filtering. So you provide filtering capabilities in the functions. If you can do that, it just makes the job a uh, whole lot easier. Okay? So the last thing I would ask is, which I'm pretty sure is not even done is, uh, the context sensitive auto sanitization. It's like a magic bullet. Like uh, the browser says, okay, this guy's not going to be doing a cross scripting, let me block it. This guy is going to do something fishy, let me drop it, right? It is possible, but believe me, it's not going to happen until the browser war is over and somebody puts up a hand and says, okay, we're not look at security. All right. So, who is safe? The guys who write quality code. Uh, what I've seen is, I've done pen testing code reviews for like more than 10 years, and what I've seen is, quality code is usually safe. If you follow good practices, it is usually safe. Okay? So use DOM construction, uh, use sanitization. All right, so a lot of talking, we're gonna get to demos now. Uh, so the first demo is, uh, uh, so this is how DOM access looks like. So this does not make a server round trip. Essentially, purely user interaction, so it does not know about what is happening. So even if you have server-side filtering, that's going to work here. Okay. So this is what Dominator looks like. So yeah, we mentioned Amit Clean uh, discovered it and why it is taking picking up steam now because you have uh, AJAX, uh, Internet Applications, Web 2.0 uh, tools. Uh, we spoke about uh, you know AppScan Dominator, but again, you know, as Albert Einstein said, clever people solve, wiser avoided, right? That is what defensive coding is about. Okay, so, right, so before I, uh, let me show you the demo directly. Okay, so here we are. This is Dominator, all right? It is a Firefox hack, Firefox hack uh, into Firebug. So if I just reload it, wow, I need to log in. So I had a video recording, but I guess uh, it didn't have good resolution, so I thought of doing it this way. Uh, let me just get another shot before we move on to the video. Like it was just me. All right. So what I'm going to do is, 
uh, uh, I have seven demos. Yeah, I'll, uh, how much time do we have? I think we have enough time. So I have seven demos. I'm going to take you through uh, uh, these cases, which will cover aspects of native JS APIs, browser context like JavaScript URIs. Uh, we're going to look at YUI, jQuery, Dominator, uh, and defensive coding. All right. So the first demo that I have is uh, we are going to uh, look at a very common uh, Dom access issue. Do you know how to increase that here? Probably I can put this on Notepad. Anyone knows how to increase the size here? Font, okay. Awesome. That's too much. Is this okay? Or shall I reduce this a little bit? Are you okay with this? All right. So I'm going to uh, show you a demo of uh, a basic XSS case. So these are like all live demos available for next one hour. If you want to just try your hand, just go ahead. After one, we'll just shut, it, shut the server down. Okay. So sorry for that. So here's the URL. So, okay, so we have a DOM access issue here, right? But Dominator did not catch it. Why? Because Dominator's model works like this. It is a hack into Firebug, okay? When Firebug executes a JS and does an analysis runtime, and if something is malicious in that, Dominator will catch it. Okay, so you essentially need to perform all the actions in your application, which a crawler will not do. Okay, so unless you know all the entry points in your application, not gonna help much. That's not the only issue. You're gonna have, you're gonna see much more issues. Okay, so a uh, couple of aspects. Uh, okay, so we have an access here, so now it catches, but not a really good way of doing it. Right, just an imitation of dominator. So unless you click the attack itself, it probably will not do it. Uh, not probably, it will not do it actually. All right, so let's look at what happened here. So uh, what I have is a bad code here. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm essentially calling uh, unsafe API doc.url, and I'm picking stuff from here. OK? Can you guys see that? No? Uh, how do I go with this? I, I just can't increase that, I think. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I think I'll have you know, one of the slides. Uh, so essentially what I have in the URL is I have a anchor tag closed and an image tag with the JavaScript. What I'm doing is I'm going to be closing the, uh, I'm putting my malicious payload and closing the existing anchor tag where I'm injecting and I'm uh, spawning a new JS, okay? I could have essentially defaced or done something bad, but I'm just going to be showing just the alerts here, all right? So what I have here is I'm taking something as, which is essentially called a dog uh, uh, taint source, which is actually is a malicious input. Ideally, when I take that, I should be filtering it, okay, which I'm which I not doing here. And then I change the anchor tag, which is this tag. Uh, uh, I change the inner HTML of this one to URL, okay? And what is URL? It is a script. It just executes, right? So this is just an example of bad coding. Ideally, you would want inner text and not in the HTML. It's a too powerful API. All right? So that's what we see here. Uh, and if you see, OK, so so let's just see this. So you have, uh, uh, where is the, OK. All right, I'm defining the image executed here. So Firebug does not show the image here. OK, I don't know why, but it does not show here. So ideally, you would see it here. Uh, but that's a basic example of Tom XSS. Let's just get back to the slide. All right, so this is called a taint source, something that you take from a, a user-controlled uh, input, which is just not the .NET URL. 
you have dot cookies, uh, and these are called direct sources, right? Which are taken from browser directly, the DOM APIs.